Hi, my name is Laura Cohen Ashman. I'm the writer director of Sour Hall, an audio series from Audible. Uh, this is What It Means to Be, commissioned by Audible. And I'll let Lydia and Naomi introduce themselves. I'm Lydia Sharma. Um, I'm the commissioning editor of scripted content at Audible UK. Um, I commissioned uh, not Naomi's version, but I commissioned Laura's version of Sour Hall. Um, and yeah, I was very lucky to get to work with Laura um, across the script and across the production. I'm Naomi Booth. I'm a novelist and short story writer. Um, I wrote um, an original short story called Sour Hall for um, an audio podcast called Hag. My first decision, I guess, was about which elements of the story spoke most strongly to me. And it was about that idea that the thought of the boggart is in some ways even more terrifying than anything the boggart does. And the idea that you might try to escape something and find that it traveled with you. And there's also that subversive trope, right? That when you have women at the center of these stories and it's like, is it in their head or is it really happening? which is so interesting in terms of in terms of that theme, I think. Yeah, and I suppose in terms of a long history of discrediting female experience as well, and, and that sort of stereotype of the hysterical woman, I suppose, of wanting to sort of engage with that horror cliche, if you like, but also hopefully to interrogate it a bit. And I think that's really interesting and also really troubling in lots of different ways. Sour Hall in particular, I thought the themes were fascinating. I feel like we're always kind of looking for finding things that are going to have a commercial pull with a really unique and special angle and interesting themes. So for me, this kind of haunted house setting. And then on top of that, you just had all this really surprising, subversive, feminine, queer horror happening that just made it so, so special. So it felt like quite a specific point of view and voice that we were looking for and I think I came across Laura you mentioned I'm going to forget now what the article was I don't know if you remember but what I really liked about it was that it was written for screen but there was so much focus on sound which actually how how was that writing for audio for the first time so it's actually quite interesting that when when it comes to writing for audio and what I found sort of doing it for the first time was that it, you you can only really rely on dialogue <laughs> So it was challenging in a lot of ways, but also very interesting. So it is kind of a balancing act between like giving yourself permission to lean into that for audio and also kind of remembering that, you know, the audience only has the audio to rely on basically to give them the key details that they need to understand, you know, the, the story basically. So it was quite daunting to kind of like go from, okay, how do I take this 18 page story and turn it into like a three hour piece? <laughs> and basically the questions that I always ask when I'm thinking about a story is like, what does it mean? Like, what is it saying? So I really wanted to be very clear about what I was trying to say with this story, which is what are the themes basically? What is the ending going to say to people and how is it gonna make them feel? I know you talk about being a hope punk writer, which I think is such a cool combination with horror because it it kind of takes the subversive medium and like subverses it again, which I think is a really a really unique aspect. I kind of feel like this one's like I've been saying horror with healing because it's oh I love that you know, like it's about trauma, but actually it's about healing from trauma. Basically, hope punk is um, is basically says that if you that caring about something as hard as you possibly can with all of your heart and soul and standing up for people, that is actually the bravest and hardest thing to do in the world. So yeah, I guess that was kind of how I approached Sour Hall. I was like, okay, this is in many ways a very dark story and it's a horror, um, but how can I do that? via a hope punk lens <laughs> and yes these characters sort of go through hell but how can I make that meaningful instead of gratuitous
hearing the story itself is really it's really strange sort of De, sort of like deja vu mm. there are certain lines where I think oh I'm back in my story and then other lines where I feel like I'm in an entirely new new story world I stopped being the writer very early on in it and just really enjoyed the experience of it as a as a new piece yeah we had a very unique experience we were so lucky that we were actually able to film on location which more or less never happens with audio the the two girls um Pearl and Lucy were just absolute angels I could not have asked for better collaborators and just really kind of nailed the characters and their relationship and I just believed them as as a couple and then all the sort of side characters people who would come in for a day a couple of days everyone just sort of brought their A-game and were just beautiful, lovely humans to work with, which was very lucky. Um, so you had to work quicker than most through a difficult year. Um, and then obviously we had to try and work out how we were gonna do the production in the midst of COVID. I think as we were approaching production, we didn't know like what the current lockdown situation was gonna be when we were approaching our production time. So it's possible that we could have found out like a day before that mm, this isn't going to happen. So everyone has to get COVID tested. We had to spread ourselves out across this farm to make sure that we were distanced properly. And so it was it was complicated, but I feel like everyone just took it in such such good humor. Um, like no one was stressed or upset. Everyone just kind of rolled with it, um, which was awesome. I expect and hope that this is going to be a lot of people their first time interacting with scripted audio. Um, so hopefully it's, that's going to be a really great experience for people and they're going to realise there's a this whole genre of storytelling out there that they haven't experienced before. But for me, I think uh, it is a story about what it means to try to escape something. Aspiring writers or writers who are interested in different forms, it's now, I think, really interesting to see the printed version, the original podcast version, and what it looks like in your version, Laura. And then of course the original, the very original source material of I Were Flitting. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess for me, I would really love people to sort of come away from listening to Sal Hall. Um, yeah, just feeling hopeful and sort of with a sense of kind of transformative and transcendent healing um and also to realize that you know queer women can uh, survive horror films <laughs> just any films in general um and yeah and come out of it actually better than they went in um which is a rarity for many genres <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. thanks for tuning in to another episode of what it means to be um be sure to check out the other episodes and the other episodes of sour hall on audible uk